everyone. Jared Chandler here. Been trying to do some daily Rangers nuggets on Twitter, if not daily, you know, as, as much as possible. Uh, hopefully you check out the thread at Jared Sandler. It starts with actually a, a long thread within a thread about Corey Seager and some of the things that are really special and that stand out about him. I might do a video just putting some of those tweets into uh, maybe a more conversational nature to, to help explain it. But uh, I want to try and with each tweet, maybe have a, a video, at least the ones that have uh, the ability to yield a, a conversation. So today, uh, Monday, January the 3rd, I tweeted about Cole Calhoun. Uh, and the tweet was more of a fun fact. So he only played 51 games last year due to injuries. He had a knee, hammy. I mean, just the lower body kind of wrecked him. And that snapped a string of consecutive seasons with at least 15 home runs at seven. He had seven straight seasons with 15 or more home runs, including the COVID abbreviated 60 game year in 2020. It was on a very short list of players who had 15 or more home runs each season from 2014 to 2020. Mike Trout, Nelson Cruz, Jose Abreu, and Cole Calhoun. And that is very much a which one of these is not like the other type of list. And all due respect to Cole Calhoun, he's you know, not Mike Trout. He's not Nelson Cruz. He's not Jose Abreu in terms of, you know, what he, he brings to a team. But uh, it's at least worth noting that, as Cole Calhoun's peripheral numbers have uh, vacillated a bit, he's been a pretty reliable source of decent power. You know, he's uh, got a career high of, of 33 home runs. I don't want to say it was an outlier year, but uh, prior to that, his, his career high was 26. And those are the only two years he's had more than 20, but uh, he's been pretty steady in his ability to, to, you know, hit home runs, especially for a guy who's kind of limited, left on left. And I don't think the Rangers are going to use him a lot left on left. Uh, you know, last year was a really rough year for him, but his, his two previous years, 2019 and 2020, it's a guy that had a combined OPS of 811, uh, an OPS plus of 112, which means that uh, his, his production, 12% uh, better than league average when you normalize some of the, the variable factors. So, um, you know, he's not a guy that that's going to hit for a super high average uh, at this point in his career. He hasn't hit for what you would consider to be a, a, a average or better batting average compared to the league since 2016. Uh, but he will get on base and he will hit for some power. He'll, you know, he'll, uh, you know, we mentioned the home runs and, and extra base hits again, it's not uh, all-star caliber, but uh, for a guy, the Rangers signed one year, a little over 5 million, uh, you know, this is a guy who's won a gold glove. He's, he's, he's a few years removed from being that guy, but uh, at least has some, some quality defensive sensibilities, even if his body isn't what it used to be. And, and that right there is the big question. Last year, his numbers were not good. He was not healthy and he tried to play through injuries and it did not yield good results. Uh, like I mentioned, the two years prior to that, numbers were pretty good. Uh, it was definitely a, a player you'd like to have in your lineup. Cole Calhoun is 34 years old. It was last year, the beginning of the body really starting to, uh, you know, play nasty tricks on him and it's just never going to get better. Or is he now healthy, ready to, you know, at least reclaim some of the player he had been the two previous years. You know, that's what the Rangers uh, are going to have to, to find out. That's what we'll find out. Uh, but for one year and 5.2 million, I mean, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad number. And, you know, some people have asked, well, is he taking playing time away from anyone? No, uh, he's really not. And he's reinforcing competition. He'll be a really good platoon option in the outfield or DHing. And, you know, maybe he will get some at-bats against lefties. Even, even at his best, that's not necessarily been uh, a tremendous strength of his uh, over Cole Calhoun's career uh, against lefties. Uh, he's a 230 hitter against righties. He's a 250 hitter. But the real difference is the power that the slugging is way better against righties than it is against lefties. Uh, and so, you know, my guess is most of his opportunities will come against righties. Uh, but maybe, you know, it's not like he's not going to get any at bats against lefties. And, you know, we'll see what he does uh, when he does get those opportunities. But uh, Cole Calhoun's not getting in the way of anyone. It's, it's further reinforcing uh, job competition. It, it's further forcing the young guys without skins on the wall to earn their keep. 
All right. You know, it's, you're not worried about Cole Calhoun five years from now. You're not worried about uh, handing him something and what that's going to do to him mentally, but you might be worried about that for a guy like Leody Tavares. You know, you want to, uh, to create a culture, but also a roster that forces these guys to earn it. Uh, and I think a guy like Cole Calhoun will, will allow the Rangers to do that. Is he, you know, a future all-star? No, but, but remember, uh, the Rangers aren't paying him $20 million a year. I think all that stuff needs to be factored in. The Rangers went, they got a, a veteran. They, they locked him in regardless of whatever the post lockout mad dash looks like they've got a, a veteran, whether you want to call him a platoon player or just a, you know, an outfielder who uh, will be a supporting cast member of this now much more impressive lineup with Seeger and Simeon. Uh, you know, you, you've got Cole Calhoun in that mix. So it's a little bit on Cole Calhoun. Uh, looking forward to doing more of these videos. Talk to you guys later.